Hi, this tutorial will introduce you to Movie Edit Pro and cover some of the important things to know about getting started, including free downloads, update online, help in tutorials, definitions, editing overview, and exporting. I'm going to use the term MEP rather than saying Movie Edit Pro each time. If you bought MEP through Magix Online, then you'll have received an email containing download information, serial number, and further instructions, like on the screen. Read through the entire email for all of the instructions carefully. An important item in the email is a link to a page containing additional information about installing and activating your download version. Click on this. Here's what you'll see. Note carefully that there's more to be downloaded once the program is installed and loaded. When you install MEP, you only have part of the program. We'll come back to this later. After inputting your serial number and registering the license with Magix, the program opens with a startup screen. Let's look at the various boxes. Create a new project. Click on options if you don't see them all. There are some options that can be set for a new project, like automatically create proxy files and movie settings. There's a section to indicate a directory in which to create a backup folder of all objects used by the project, which can be done now, later, or not at all. Under Movie Settings, select either PAL or NTSC for North America. Leave the audio sample rate at 48,000. Load Existing Project. Here you can navigate to one of the demo projects or to one of your own, if you have any yet. And use a movie template which will be the subject of another tutorial. For this tutorial, I'll select Create a New Project and give it a name, and in this case I'll call it Seasons, and Accept. It's best to always give a project a name. Now we see the main user interface. By default, the Preview or Source Monitor is at the upper left, the Media Pool, upper right, and the Project Window, or what I like to call the Arranger, at the bottom. These windows can be moved around and resized, including moving one or more of them to another monitor. There's a little button at the upper right of each window to make it full screen. To undo it, press again on this button or press the escape key. If all else fails, press the F9 key to do a reset of the windows. At the very top left of the screen is the name of the program. If you have the basic version, you won't see plus or premium appended to the name of the program. There's a menu with the preview window that you should take note of. At the bottom of the window are transport controls that you should review and learn. There's a jog wheel that is turned off by default. You can turn it on by opening the menu and selecting Visible Jog Shuttle. The preview window will show either the source clip or what is on the timeline, depending on the context. More about that later. The right hand window is called Media Pool. The first tab in the Media Pool is like Windows Explorer where you can search for and import files into the project. There are some tools at the top to help with navigation. The Folder Tree View button toggles between details or just links for folders. There's a search button and a menu button. You can create a link to a folder by navigating to it and then selecting Link for Folder. Then you can rename it. This is very convenient and doesn't affect the real name of the folder, only the linked name. At the right is a zoom button and display options button to see a list, details, or large icons. Note that there are three other tabs, fades or transitions, title, and effects. Moving to the bottom, we have the project window area, which is where you'll be creating your movie. There are buttons to change to one of four modes, storyboard, scene overview, timeline, and also multicam. Storyboard mode is great for initially bringing videos and images into the timeline and moving them around. In the timeline mode, there's a time indication that starts at zero subdivided into minutes, seconds, and frames. Not fractions of a second because everything gets down to frames. There's also a time counter at the top of the preview window which gives you a precise reading as to where the playback marker is located. Look around the project window and you'll find many useful tools. 
There are editing buttons at the top left of the project window. You're going to be using these very often, so learn what they do. Before going any further, let's look under Help in the top menu. There's an on-screen help file that can be activated here or by pressing F1. This is a Windows-style help file with contents, index, and search. I strongly recommend that you read the first part of the manual up to the end of Quick Start to better understand how the program works. This help file is the same as the PDF manual, also found under Help. Also under Help is a choice for free download. This is probably not available for the trial version, and the box version probably already includes everything. Click on this. A screen like this should be loaded. Select everything and accept in order to download and install the rest of the program. Depending on which version that you have, there will be the same or less items on the list. The process can take an hour or so depending on the speed of your internet connection. Also under help is update online. You should do this once just after you've installed the program and then check back regularly to see if there's not another update. If you have the premium version, there's even more to download, including some that were included in the email from Magix if you purchased directly from Magix online. The last item under help is about. This gives you the program name and version number as per the latest installed patch. You can also see your serial number. Again, never give or show anyone or post your serial number. You can also get help by going to the magix.com site and selecting support. Then select FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, and Technical Support and log in at the link shown. This will give you the login screen. You should have already registered when you purchased MAP or any other Magix product. Log in. You have several options. One is to get technical support. If you want to see your registered products and the latest patches, click on Customer Area and you'll see the list. Download will give you the opportunity to download a patch. You can also access your account by clicking on the Account button on the Support screen at the top right. Log in with the same credentials. Go to My Products and you'll see the list, including when you purchased the product, the serial number, and a link to download the program, and some device information. The Magix.com site has several tutorials under the Basic and Plus and Premium versions. Click on Learn More under a product. Go down to near the bottom and click on View Online Tutorial Videos. You should watch all of these. There are also tutorials available on YouTube and in the Magix Community Forum at magix.info under the Tutorials tab. Reduce the selection by clicking on Video under Categories. For more help, you can ask a question under the Q&A tab. Click on Pose a Question. Look at the instructions and please comply. Create a subject that gives an idea as to your problem. Look through the forum for examples and how answers were treated. Also do a search to see if someone hasn't already asked your question and it's already been answered. Fully describe your problem. Remember, no one can see your screen. Nobody knows exactly what you did. Back to the program. The next important thing to look at is Program Settings under File Menu or Shortcut Y. Under the Playback tab, make sure that the output device is correct for your setup. Under the Arranger section, there is Spacebar Behavior. Turn this on or off depending on how you want to work. Under the Folder tab, you see the locations as to where the files are or will be located. This was set up by default when you installed unless you change the default locations during installation. Note the location of the project files. You can change the default. Note the locations of other folders and change as necessary. Under the Video Audio tab, you see the video standard, NTSC or PAL. Under Timeline, there are some useful parameters. I normally have video and audio on separate tracks, but I'll leave this checked for now. Under Import, make sure that Import Video with Sound is checked, or you won't have any sound when you import a video. The standard picture length is set to 7 seconds by default. This will be the default length of any images that you import into the project. Change this as desired. Under the System tab, a very important feature is Save Automatically, which is set for 10 minute intervals. This actually creates backup files with the extension .mv underscore. If something goes wrong with your project file, you can always open a backup file there is a 10 file cycle from 0 to 9. Take a look at the other parameter tabs under program settings for future reference. You should read up on these. 
There are also movie settings, or shortcut E, where you'll find or you can input more information about your movie. You should review these. The Movie Settings tab shows various information, including the number of tracks, and the video settings, including the width and the height and the ratio, etc. The Movie Information shows more information, and under Project Settings, you can put in some information if you wish. Phew, we're finally getting back to editing. You need to know some definitions to understand what you're doing. You'll be working with projects, movies, and objects. At the end, you'll want to create a compiled video file or a DVD or a Blu-ray disc. A project is what you're doing, creating a compilation of video, audio, and images, edited the way you want, and most likely including some effects, transitions, and titles. A project can contain one or more movies. This example project is called Seasons. When you save a project, it creates a file with the extension MVP on your hard disk. This is a project file that you will always load to do further editing. A movie can be one single video clip or a combination of clips and photos. You can have several movies in a project and each movie can be exported individually as a video file. All or some of the movies can be burned to a DVD or Blu-ray disk. For this example project, which I called Seasons, Note that the tab above the project window is also called Seasons by default. This is the Movie tab, and I want to create a movie for each season. So, I'll start by changing the name of the movie to Winter. Right-click on the name in the tab, and select Rename Movie. Note that this doesn't change the name of my project. It's still Seasons. Next, I'll add a movie by clicking on the plus, right-clicking, and changing the name to Spring. I'll add two more summer and autumn. We'll start with winter so I'll click on this tab or movie. I'll switch to storyboard mode. I want to start by importing a video so I'll search for it in the media pool file browser under import and I'll choose one. Click on the object so that you know which one you're working with. Placing the mouse over an icon brings up three buttons. Clicking on the little play button starts playing a preview of the clip. If this is the clip that you want, click on the little import button and it will place the clip at the end of anything else on the timeline or in the storyboard. I'll add another clip. This time I'll just drag it down onto the storyboard. Now I'll go and select a third one and I'll drag it on, but this time I want to place it at the very beginning. That's quite simple as you can see. And I can move it around left or right. So that's one way to quickly edit. Let's take a quick look to see what happens on the timeline mode. There we can see our three objects, one after the other, spread out over time. I'll go back now to storyboard mode. Let's create a title. Click on the object that the title should be linked to. Click on the title or T button. And a default text appears and the dialog box opens in the media pool. Type your text into the box. You can have more than one line by using enter after each line. Click on the check mark to accept. MEP always places the title at the beginning of the object that was selected. However, you can move the title along anywhere that you want to on the timeline or onto another track. Now it's time to save. But what are we saving? We're saving the project, not changes to any video or audio files or photos. They don't get touched. So what's happening? A project in Movie Edit Pro is a series of commands. The original object files are neither touched nor are they imported into the project file. What we imported was the location and name of the files. MEP simply uses the files virtually. The original files always have to stay on your computer. If you delete them or even move them elsewhere, then MEP won't be able to find them to use them again. Thus, don't delete the originals of anything that you import into MEP thinking that it's been saved by MEP. It has not been saved. Press on play to review the movie that we've got so far. Let's say that we're finished and we want to export this movie. Click on the button at the upper right corner of the screen to open the export dialog. There are several options. I have to caution you against uploading directly to the internet to a place like YouTube or Facebook. They sometimes change their protocol and the upload from MEP doesn't work. But the biggest reason is because you should always review your export before uploading. I'll select Output as Video File. We have some choices, quality and format. 
I usually like to export to a WMV file. For YouTube, I use MP4. I'll select WMV. There are some options under quality with increasing quality and file size. For this example, I'll select the highest quality. Look at the summary of the output. Since this is the highest quality, it also means that it will take the longest to export. But that's OK. Click on Save Video. Now it's asking me where to export the file to. Note where the export will be saved to. These are fine to me and I'll accept by clicking on Save and the file will be created. Once done, you can view this in a viewer program like Windows Media Player or send it to someone. Always play it first to make sure that it worked okay and that you haven't made any silly mistakes. And remember, you can only export one movie at a time. Try doing a small test project to learn before tackling anything serious. Watch for my tutorials on movie templates and basic editing. I hope that this has helped you get started properly in MAP. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.